All right, so let's verify an indefinite integral, and uh, we'll talk about what we mean here. So first off, indefinite integral. If we don't know, if you don't know uh, the difference between a definite and an indefinite integral, I have a video on my channel outlining the uh, mathematical, conceptual dif mathematical conceptual differences between definite and indefinite integrals. That would be a great idea for you to go ahead and check out, too, if you want to lay some of the groundwork for that, if that's not already present. All right, so moving forward, uh, an indefinite integral, let's uh, just remind ourselves what we're talking about here, an indefinite integral is an integral about which we do not care about an interval, and we just have uh, the indefinite integral of f of x dx, and we're going to come out with the antiderivative. So, antiderivative, this is the exact same thing as the indefinite integral. They, they mean the exact same thing. They're completely synonymous terms. So what do we mean by antiderivative? Well, antiderivative simply means what function, when I take its derivative, is going to give me what we have inside of here, f of x. So uh, a, a great example that will you know, uh, be sharp in everyone's mind is, okay, what is the derivative of x squared? Well, if we take the prime of x squared, we're going to get 2x. So let's just work backwards. That's an antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of 2x? Well, it's just x squared, because if we take the derivative of x squared, we're going to get 2x. So that's all this means. What function, when I take its derivative, gives me the function inside of the integrand? Okay, so that's all this is talking about. That's all this means. So going forward, let's, uh, let's talk about what we want to do to verify. So let's say I, I decided I wanted to, uh, for some reason or another, I wanted to take an indefinite integral, and I wanted to take the indefinite integral of the function x over, I, I, it was irrational, x over x squared, hang on, let's write this better, x over x squared, uh, the, oh, how about this, x over the radical x squared plus 1 dx. So I wanted the I, I took this indefinite integral and uh, let's say I did some work and I came out with that the indefinite integral was the radical of x squared plus one plus c. Okay, so this is this is what I came up with. So how can I? I'm sorry, this is so ugly. I've just gotta let me pause this and I'll rewrite it. All right, I'm back. Here we go. So it's that and I took the uh, integral of this and I got that it was. X, the ra radical x squared plus 1 plus c. So how do I know if I'm right? Let's say I don't have access to uh, like a Wolfram Alpha or a really nice uh, TI-84, some kind of graphing calculator I can integrate and differentiate with. What do I do? Well, remember what we talked about? We said that the indefinite integral is the same thing as an antiderivative. So an antiderivative, we said, is just wh whatever function when you take its derivative, it gives you the function you're looking at. So the antiderivative of 2x is x squared because x squared prime is 2x. So by that same logic, wouldn't it be the case that if this is truly the integral of this, then wouldn't all of this, if we take its prime, just give us this? Well, yes, it would. If it's correct, then it will, because since this is the indefinite integral over here on the left, then we know that this over here is the antiderivative. And the antiderivative, if we take its derivative, it's going to give us this. So, a great way to verify this, and the best way, I think, is just to take the derivative of what we got from uh, taking the indefinite integral. So, what we need to look at is, we need to look at radical x squared plus 1 plus c prime. And if that matches this, then we know that, yay, we're correct. So that's what we need to do, and that's what we need to check out here. So all we're doing from this point out is just remembering how to differentiate. We've been, you know, you've probably been integrating for a while if you're at this point, so now you have to jump back and say, okay, how do we differentiate this function right here? Well, luckily, it is not that difficult, so let's get started. Well, the first thing we need to do is let's differentiate this. Uh, this is a sum, of course, so let's differentiate it by term. So what do I mean by that? All I mean is let's break this thing up into two different things. Let's break it up into c and rad x squared plus 1. So the first thing, the easiest thing to do is to take the prime of c. 
C prime, what is it? It's always zero because C could be 1 or 7 or 14 or 55 or 2,387.26596 and it's still just going to always be zero. So that's all we need to worry about here. It's always going to be zero. So uh, we C prime is zero, so we're done. We know that we can get rid of C and not even really worry about it. Now let's take the prime of rad x squared plus 1. All right, so how are we going to take the prime of this? What do we need to do first? Well, how about we do a U sub in our heads? If you're not familiar with U subs, go ahead and check out my video on U substitutions uh, under this same integrals playlist on my channel. So we're going to do we're just going to do a quick U sub here, and we're going to end up with uh, x squared plus one prime over two times x squared plus 1 radical, and then we'll differentiate this sum by term. So we're going to get x squared prime plus 1 prime over 2 times rad x squared plus 1. Well, the derivative of 1 is just 0, so we don't even need to worry about that. And we know that the uh, uh, derivative of x squared is just 2x. So we're going to keep our 2x on the top here. So 2x over 2 times radical x squared plus 1. And all right, what step do you see that we can do now? Well, how about let's just kill these 2s because 2x over 2 times x squared plus 1, we can just get rid of them. They'll just cancel out. So this is going to leave us now with x over x squared plus 1. All right, so x over x squared plus 1. Is this what we have on the front page? If this is correct, then we know that uh, we've, we've, we've done this appropriately. We did our original math appropriately, barring any mathematical errors here. And I checked this beforehand, so I know that this is indeed the, uh, the appropriate derivative. So let's go back here and see what we were looking at. We said it should be x over x radical x squared plus 1 right here. And so, uh, indeed, that is correct. So, we're good to go. That's right. Uh, because x squared plus 1, uh, radical x squared plus 1 plus c, we took the derivative of this, and it gave us this. And so, we're right. We're done. We did this correctly. That's a, the way we verify this. So, we verify this is a review. Indefinite integrals or antiderivatives can be verified by taking the derivative or differentiating the answer, differentiating the response that you get to the indefinite integral. So, and if that indefinite integral, when you take its uh, derivative or when you differentiate it, you get what you got in, in, inside the integrand here, then you know you did your problem appropriately. Well, that's all there is to it.